Hello and good morning. Phil Thatch here at Volkswagen Wetlands in Chattanooga, Tennessee, and I'm here. Uh, some friends of mine, Robert Scott, has gotten some fantastic photographs recently of American Kestrel here, and my buddy Percy Sheely got a picture of an indigo bunting, which I've never seen an indigo bunting myself, and I've only gotten very few photographs of American Kestrel, so I was here looking for those. Haven't seen any of those so far, but I did find a uh, a really pretty wildflower on the side of the road so I'm going to make a macro photograph of it to get things started today. Here is the wildflower shot I've been working on. I'm using the Tokina 100 f 2.8 macro on this wildflower and the way I'm focusing is I zoom this live view picture pretty close and then adjust the focus until it looks good and sharp. Oh, there's an ant on there, that's cool. And then I've got my remote shutter, I've got my exposure set up. I'm going to overexpose it just a little bit. I'm at F10 120th of a second ISO 100 with the remote shutter. Let me get a few of those. Oh, there's lots of ants on it. couldn't decide whether to do a square crop like this or to stick with the 2 by 3 crop that I shot it at with it over on the bottom right of the image. So I ended up using both. This is the same image. So let me know in the comments whether or not you prefer the square Instagram style version of this shot or the 2 by 3 version of this Primrose shot. This is Z6 video of the exact same competition, uh, composition as the photograph. It's actually raining a little bit right now. I'm at F20 with this so the background's not nearly as as blown out as it was in the photograph. But you may be able to see the ants crawling around on the flower in this video, maybe. Okay, here's a little bit closer up video to show the ants crawling around this wildflower. Now I'm at F36. Which gives this lens a lot of depth of field. That's kind of the secret uh, to this Tokina 100 is the really close minimum focus distance, obviously, and the f-stop climbs to just ridiculous numbers, which gives it lots of depth of field. Whenever you close your aperture down really small, you can really see uh, dust and debris on your sensor, and there's quite a bit here. Well, while we're doing macro video, I figured I would show you where I stepped while I was working on that macro photograph. I stepped on this giant anthill and woke them up, and they are currently biting my leg while I make this video. Sorry about messing up your house, guys. I was just trying to make a picture. Here's a little closer view of the angry ants. One more angry ant shot for you. I sent Heather a quick cell phone photo of these wildflowers and she quickly identified them as primrose so I'm sure Katniss Everdeen would be proud. Let me show you the whole scene here. There's one, two, three, four, five, there's one back there that's not opened up yet, six of the pink primrose and then there right beside them is the anthill which is causing my ankle and lower leg so much pain right now after all the bites I received. All the macro photos and video were done with the Nikon Z6 with the FTZ adapter 
and the Tokina 100 millimeter f2.8 macro which on this setup is manual focus only which is what I would be doing for macro photography anyway so that is no loss that it doesn't have autofocus on a z-series camera because of its screw drive type autofocus here at VW wetlands I spotted a lot more right here by the guardrail of these pink primrose these are not the ones that I photographed but there are a bunch of them right here on the back side of this guardrail they're really pretty My telephoto shots today have been made with the Nikon D500 using the 1.7 teleconverter on the VR500 F4G. I had this setup that I used at Cades Cove a few days ago and uh, it's not my regular setup. I usually would use the 1.4 but uh, the 1.7 is on there so I've just continued to use it and it's been working pretty good. Okay so here's some photographs made with that setup. First this is a female red-winged blackbird looking beautiful in a tree and next up we have a belted kingfisher male this one was so far away I had to crop it quite a bit even with the 1.7 teleconverter used on it and here is a great crested flycatcher first one I've ever photographed great crested flycatcher what a beautiful bird and I was so happy to get a shot of it much more common at Volkswagen Wetlands is the Eastern Phoebe. Uh, I was really happy with this shot with the lily pads in the background. And here are the trumpeted flowers of a cross vine. I saw these all over the place that day. This is the area where I spotted the great crested gnat catcher. He was hanging around that old dead tree there and I think I finally got the photograph in the branches of one of the trees adjacent to it. I was walking around taking bird photos with the D500 and the 500 F4 with the 1.7 teleconverter and I ran across this tree right here that has these beautiful blooms and I took a cell phone picture of this one because I can get to it and I sent it to my buddy Ray who plugged it into his Google phone and it came back saying that it is a black locust. So that's really cool and but the composition that I like is those two blooms that are a pretty good bit away. They're probably five feet behind this wall. Uh, so I can't get to them uh, and I took a couple of pictures with the uh, with the 500 f4 on the d500 in the monopod shaky You know and had to be from way back um, And I decided I would go and get a tripod and I put my uh, I got the z6 and I put the 200 to 500 on it, and I think that's working better for me Got a vertical composition uh, of those two and I think you can see them on the right hand side of the frame I got a vertical composition of them um, with the branch going up at an angle it looks pretty cool and uh, I think it's really really pretty let's see the lights change some need to speed my shutter speed up that's uh, 1 80th ISO 100 and f8 is what I'm using it's got a nice green background and even at f8 that background is nicely blown out and the, the flower that's closest is nicely in focus and the flower that's juxtaposed behind it is slightly out of focus uh, so I really like it shooting it with the remote shutter release there we go the light continued to change and I ended up going with this one that was at 1 125th of a second this is my favorite photograph of the day I really like how this one turned out I like my composition on this one quite a bit and I hope you like it as well well, that about does it for today. I think I'll go home and get to work on putting this video together. I'd like to thank my support staff, which included Heather, who identified the pink primrose, and Ray and his fancy phone that identified the black locust tree, and the Merlin application, which I used to identify the great crested gnat catcher. I'd like to take a moment to thank you for watching this video, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.